it's great for children. Any amateur ought to know better than that. I know, Spike, but everybody isn't a flyer like you. Ah, go on. You know, I was never in a plane till a month ago. Oh, but everybody doesn't pick up things as fast as you do. You should know about my pickup, baby. My instructor should see that. This goof ever tried that in a real crate, he'd crack himself up. I'd like to give him a couple of pointers. He did do a couple of things right. Hey, that's a great gag, Tug. I suppose if you were a sailor on shore leave, you'd get your amusement out of a rowboat, wouldn't you? <laughs> what are you looking for? Well, a lot. What'd you lose? What I'm looking for. Well, what's that? I dropped my wallet. Oh, you what? You did? Hey, it's my belt wall. She just picked it up. Well, I can pick up my own thing, see? How do I know it's yours? Well, my name is it. Not so fast, Lug. How do I know it's your name? Say, how do you know anything? You know what I ought to do with that? I think you ought to wash it. Come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the rush? He asked for it, didn't he? Another scrap down there. These guys are always looking for trouble. And I'm going down and get them. That's the way. Wait a minute, Casey. You don't want him to pinch anybody. What do you want to do? Hang around here and lose another decision to the cops? Oh, come relax. on. Well, I know, but the big thing is like you come on. Now remember this. What you don't see never hurts you. I know, but I haven't been seeing a lot of things lately, and that's why I'm in wrong with the sergeant. Come on, will you? Hey, look, I come down here for a good time. You're going to get me in the who's gal. Oh, you've been in the who's gal before. Is that so? Why do these guys always pick on me? I always come out on the long end because I never go gunning for trouble. The skipper gets sore every time you get into these jams. The next time you miss your run, he's going to let you down for good. I hold myself in. He said... Why don't you... Walk where you're looking. Why don't you pick out somebody else to bump into? Mister, he didn't mean it. He was just... Oh. An eight-minute egg, eh? Say, it's guys like you that cause all the trouble around here. I ought to give you a good smack on the nose. Pitch that guy! So you're looking for trouble, huh? Well, 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 he, he bumped into me. Yeah, he bumped into him. Oh, what do you do? Go around popping everybody that bumps into you? No, but I was, uh... Oh, listen, officer, I don't want any trouble with you, see? Listen, it ain't what you want, it's what you're gonna take. And how long it's gonna be? Come on, get going. Wait a minute. He's a pal of mine. Oh, do you want to go, too? No. Hey, Chuck, you tell the skipper I'll be on deck for the four o'clock run. Yeah, but don't say what month. Play the clock over there. Go on now, go on. Why don't you get your feet out of the way? What do you do, walk around in a trance? Oh, pull in your legs. You're not on the witness stand. Wait, please. Pipe down and sit down. Hey. All right, next case, off the doom. You're next. I hope they give you a life.
Now, if you'll just let me tell you my part of the story. What's your name? Uh, Lila Beaumont. You probably know my dad. He's president of the Second National Bank. What's the charge? 82 miles an hour in a 20-mile zone, passing four boulevard stops and intimidating an officer in performance of his duty. Are you guilty or not guilty? Oh, well, now, I wasn't going so fast, and the boulevard stops were pretty close together. And the officer, he was awfully cross. The total bail on three counts will be $75. You want to pay it now or put up a bond for court appearance? <laughs> Silence. Order. Oh, I'll pay it now. All right, right over there. Next case. Officer Casey. What's the charge? Unprovoked assault and battery, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I was standing on the pier doing my duty as usual. When this fellow bumps into a guy, I mean a gentleman, and uh, without any warning knocks the poor man down. You're aware, aren't you, that there's a regulation about the appearance of an officer's uniform? Well, that is, I... Uh... Well, pay a little attention to what you're after. Well, what have you to say for yourself, young man? Well, I don't believe you would countenance seeing a lady being molested without interfering, would you, Sergeant? A lady? Casey, what's this about a lady? I've never seen any woman. Why, of course he didn't, Sergeant. It's not his fault. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you didn't see anything at all, did you, Casey? Well, didn't you or didn't you see it? The what? The lady. I heard her. Oh, but she didn't say anything. Say, were you or weren't you on your beat? Now listen, Casey. This is the third time in a month that I've had reports about you neglecting your duty. There's been fights and all kinds of disturbances upon your beat. And on two occasions, I had to send the raid squad because you couldn't be located. Now. If I hear any more reports or complaints, I'm going to ask you to turn in your badge. And you're lucky if I don't give you a couple of demerits for having your coat unbuttoned. Case dismissed. Ha uh ha. -huh. This guy's doing okay, but I joy happen, ain't he? Yeah. Five dollars a spin. He's doing all right. All right. He's doing great. <laughs> Five to four. Well, it looks like as if Flash is in the can. I'll get his things out. Maybe it'll save us a lot of trouble. <laughs> what do you mean, trouble? When a skip sets a guy down, he's down. Flash has been getting away with too much around here. Ah, oh, where do you get that stuff? Come on, sign this thing and let me get out of here. I got a date. I'll bet they're after Flash. Maybe he got away. Okay, Pete, thanks. Remember, Flash, me and the missus goes up with you Sunday. Sure thing, Pete, and the family, too. Ah, oh, come on. If you took the wife and kids, you'd need a dirigible. <laughs> so long, Pete. Go on. All right, well, you certainly, me. you certainly made it. Yes, indeed, right on the dot, boy. All Betsy's all set and rearing to go. Hey, Flash, yeah. Red Ricks is flying your route. Says who? Hey, the skipper set you down for good. Say, listen, if he keeps canning me, someday I'm going to take his word for it and put him right on the spot. <laughs> all I know is orders is orders. Say, listen, Fredericks, Betsy here wouldn't out act with a guy like you at the controls. Why, I've raised that baby since she was a pup. Well, she hasn't been fed so regular lately. Maybe she'd appreciate a master she could depend upon. Say, listen, Fredericks, I don't like your at it. Now, wait a minute, Flash. Is that so? Well, you get out and see the skipper about it. You're going to have plenty of time to do it from now on. Now, get out of my way. I'm taking off.
$25. Looks as though thrills are getting cheaper. Well, I'll take my thrills on terra firma. The more firmer, the less terra. Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> you're not thinking of going up, are you? No, I'm not thinking about it. I'm practically up now. Time for Flash yet. I suppose he'll be ahead of schedule as usual. I want to get him before he leaves this field. Oh, boss. Why don't you give him another chance? He's all right. You know he's the best pilot you got. Sure. When I've got him, I spend half my time bailing him out of jail and getting him out of scrapes. If I didn't have a soft spot for the mug, he'd have been through here six months ago. Oh, he's all right. He just don't like people pushing him around. Pushing him around? Yeah. But well, Fredericks didn't push him around. He was acting under my orders. I tell you, Flash has cut that fist of his around here for the last time. Ah, listen, don't be... That's him now. John Henry there. Yes, sir. What kind of a trip you have? Not bad. Yeah. Hello, Skip. How's the boy? Norris, what do you mean by taking up one of my ships after I've set you down? Well, I'll tell you. It's a long story. Oh, no, it isn't. It's a short story. Now, once and for all, you're fired. Through. Canned. Washed up. Do I make myself clear? Well, I got a vague idea of what you mean. I've tried for months to drill it into your head that flying the mail is a business, not the picnic. I've given you every chance to straighten out. And what do you do? Disorganize my crew. Drag me into your scrapes. And try to make me look like a fool. You're absolutely right, Skip. You're absolutely right. Hey, Jed, let me take her up, will you? She's a friend of mine. I want to surprise her. Well, OK. But be careful. Remember, no stunting. a good spanking. Nobody else but. I just wanted to make sure you get your five dollars worth. Yeah. Say, lady, I like you. What have you got on for tonight? I got ringside seats for a swell nightclub. I'll call for you at seven. Well, what are you running away for? All I need is your address. Try and get it. 
428 Renfrew Drive. May I help you, madame? Uh, some hosiery, please. What size, please? Eight and a half. Why, Tug, how are you, boy? How's, How's the kid? kid? I'm glad to see you. Don't tell me you're studying French. <laughs> what are you doing around here? Oh, uh, different things. Different things. A dame, eh? Not the same one. The same one. Boy, all I can say is if they can keep you interested over two weeks, she must be a pick. Well, uh, well, uh, well, how are things at the airport, Tug? Oh, say, since you bailed out, things are so quiet down there, I think even the monotony's getting on the skipper's nerves. <laughs> well, listen, you tell the skipper I can be had, see? Oh, yeah? Yeah, of course, I've got a chance to go with the GMC if I want to. Oh, big shot, eh? Hey? Oh, but I don't know. I think I'll just play around a little while, see? Excuse me, Tug, I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you soon. Uh, wait a minute, what's the matter? You afraid I'll cop your girl? No, I just don't want her to see the kind of company I keep. Don't forget to say hello to the skipper for me. Would you like this color? Pardon me, uh, do you carry ladies, Bill Murray? I'm sorry, we don't carry me ladies. I'm sorry, my mistake. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Who does that guy think he's shoving? Now, wait a minute, Flash. Oh, for two cents, oh, I... don't be silly. He probably doesn't even know you're alive. Here, help me with my packages, will you, honey? I forgot something. So do you go through all this every time you go to a party? Don't be so curious. You can wait for me in the car. I'll be right out. All right, honey. Now, you won't be long. No. Did I ask you about Millinery? So you're getting in my hair. Lila, wait a minute. Now listen, honey, I'm awfully sorry, but that guy there... Robert is... Norris, you've humiliated me for the last time. Oh, but Lila, be reasonable. What am I supposed to do when a guy deliberately bumps me in the back? He didn't do anything deliberately at all. He just knocked off that chip you're always carrying around on your shoulder. Put my packages on the seat. I want to go. Yeah, but what about our party tonight? I'm not going to any more parties with you. If you didn't like the food, you'd probably hit the hostess in the chin. Ah, oh, don't be mad. I won't do it again, I promise. You've promised the same thing before, dozens of times, and it doesn't mean a thing to you. Well, all right, I won't fly off the handle anymore, honest. Cross my heart. Oh, come on, let's drive out of the doghouse, what do you say? We better get started, or uh, I might open one of these packages and take a peek at your undies. <laughs> oh, you're the craziest, silliest little boy I ever knew. I don't know why I like you. Why, it's just part of your general good judgment. <laughs> Wait a minute, Lila, not so fast. Not to step on the flash. It's four o'clock and Dad'll be sore. And... Yes, well, we'll be a lot sore if we hit something. Lila, you're altogether too reckless. One of these days you'll crack up. <laughs> you should talk about being reckless after the way you stunned in a plane. Well, that's different. In a plane, you don't have to worry about anything so much. Oh, that's ridiculous. No, it isn't at all. You don't have to figure on the other guy's mistakes. Hey, look out! Hey, you mug! What are you trying to do, kill a guy? Now, you stay out of this, Flash. Don't say a word. Let me handle it. Wait till I get down. I'll punch you in the... You... 
A day. I ought to know. I'm terribly sorry. You're sorry. You almost kill a guy, and then you're just sorry. And as for you, I ought to knock your teeth down your throat for letting her get away with it. So you won't talk, huh? Well, I get around. I'll open that trap for you. So that's the kind of a molly cuddle you want me to be, huh? Flash, what's the sense of getting into a brawl with a person like him? How did I get this way? Did it really happen, or am I dreaming or something? I know it was hard for you, but I was very proud of you. Doesn't that mean something? Of course it does, Lila. But I still think I should have parked that guy's nose on the other side of his face. You sure you can get a taxi, Frank? Oh, sure. If I don't find one at the drugstore, why, I'll go in and phone for one. <laughs> I'll let you come in and phone, but I'm afraid it might waken Daddy. Uh, how's chances for a little kiss? Mm -mm. I've been kissed by you before, and I'm much too tired to stay up another half hour. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Just a little peck, huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> good evening, Mr. Beaumont. Good morning, Mr. Norris. Hello, Daddy. Do you mind if Flash comes in to phone for a taxi? Oh, I see. Come in. As a matter of fact, I want to have a little talk with you. Both of you. Bring him inside. Sit down, Norris. You two ought to know better than to be driving around this time of night. Now, Daddy, are we going to go through all that again? But we've got to go through with it, Lila, and we'll put a stop to it. Norris, you seem like a sensible young man. You ought to know better than to keep a girl of Lila's age out until daybreak. Well, yes, I know, but under the circumstances, I thought it would be all right. What circumstances? Well, you see, I'm going to marry Lila. Lila, you never told me anything about this. Well, I didn't tell anybody about it, Daddy. You see, uh, I knew it all along, but I didn't think Flash knew it. Lila, I've been spoiling you and letting you have your own way a long time. You practically had me tied to your apron string for years, but when it comes to a matter of your marriage, I intend to have something to say about it. Now, Daddy, I'm free and 20. And when it comes to choosing a husband, I intend to do all the choosing myself. Don't talk to your father like that. I'll talk the way I please. You'll do as your father tells you. Uh, uh, in the event that you two should decide to get married, would you still continue to fly, Norris? Why, sure. I've just been on a little vacation. I see. Well, of course, there are several things I'm afraid we'd have to talk about. But after all, you're not going to be married tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. We can wait a week or so, I guess. It's getting late, Flash. You better not bother with a taxi. Take my car. You can bring it back in the morning. Okay. That'll give me an excuse to drive out here again. Well, good night, Mr. Beaumont. I'll be seeing you. Good night. You've always wanted me to marry some man in your business, like Hamilton, for instance. Why don't you take Flash into the bank? Hmm. Don't you think it'd be rather difficult to get Flash to change from aviation to banking? Oh, he'd do it for me, Daddy, I'm sure. Why, you've no idea how much he's changed since we've been going together. Why, only tonight on the way home he'd... Uh -huh. Why's the fire? 
You again. Listen, Mug, can't you pick any other road to drive on? And if you come back here looking for trouble, you're going to get it. And this time, you're not going to run away. You're telling me. Say, Webster, uh, deposits are increasing. Maybe we'd better put on another teller or two. All right, Mr. Beaumont, I'll look into it. Some of these South American companies have been defaulting on their bond issues. I was just thinking maybe we had better unload ours. They're below par already. Well, John, I don't know whether it's wise to take a loss until we find out we have to. Yes, I know, but what do you think, Jim? Well, of course, I wouldn't want to see us take a loss. On the other hand, I feel that the issues we hold are pretty sound. Now, maybe it'd be a good idea for Baker to run down there and look the situation over. That's a good idea, Cal. After all, we are in this thing pretty deep. Well, I don't know whether this is a very good time for me to go away. With that traction deal coming up and a few others, I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll think it over, John, and I'll get together with you a little later on. If you don't mind, I'll have to step along now. I have a very important luncheon appointment. All right. What's the matter with Baker lately? He seems preoccupied most of the time. I've noticed it, too. I've been wondering about it. It's not only Baker, J.B., What's been on your mind the past few days? Now, this bond issue wasn't big enough to worry you? No, no. It's not that, Jim. It's Lila. Oh. <laughs> well, what's she up to now? <laughs> she begin tangling up with the uh, traffic cops? No, Jim. No, it's one man this time. Man? Who? That aviator, Norris. You met him at uh, lunch with us the other day. Well, he seems a very likable chap. Oh, he's all right, but uh, you know how I feel about airships and aviators. That kind of life is a pretty dangerous sort of existence. By the way, Jim, whatever happened between you and Lila? You seem to be running around together pretty steadily once. Now that I think of it, you haven't been out to the house for dinner for quite a while. Well... I guess it's kind of hard for a girl to be romantic with a man who played dolls with her and brought her lollipops when she was a kid. However, if Lila's made up her mind to marry this fellow, you've got to learn to like it. Well, that's not all, Jim. She's after me day and night to give him a job in the bank. Maybe you'd make a go of it. Mm. I'd be glad to take him in my department if you like. No. No, I'll not do that, Jim. If he comes in here, he'll start at the bottom, same as you did. Well, maybe it'd be a good idea, J.B. If he's got the right stuff in him, it'll work out all right, all around. And if he hasn't, well, we'll soon find out. Don't I get something for it? You're getting me. Isn't that enough? Sure, but an agreement usually has a seal of some kind. Now all you have to do is set the date. We mustn't be in a hurry, Flash. There's one or two things we'll have to talk over first. What, for instance? Well, for instance, there's your flying. My flying? What's the matter with my flying? <laughs> it isn't exactly that. You wouldn't want me to spend my life worrying every time you're behind schedule, being frightened every time you're out in a storm. Oh, well, what else could I do? It's, it's the only thing I'm cut out for, the only way I know how to make a living. I'm not so sure about that. I think you have enough ability to make good at anything you'd set your mind to. Yeah? What, for instance? Well, 
I had a little talk with Daddy, and he's willing to give you a chance at the bank. In the bank? Me in a bank? Why, why, I'd feel like a porpoise in a goldfish bowl. I, I sort of thought you'd be willing to try it for me. Well, I told you, Lila, I'd be willing to do anything for you, but I couldn't settle down to a tame job like that. I'd, oh, I'd, oh, you know what I mean, I'd, I'd. Mr. Norris. Just a minute. Listen, Norris. We're off on the monthly balance again. It's probably you. Let me see your ledger sheet. Hmm. That's it. You posted $7,200 as a credit instead of a debit. Now listen here, Norris. Don't you think we've got anything else to do besides slave till six or seven o'clock just to correct your mistakes? All right, so I made a mistake. Other people make mistakes, don't they? Yes, but not every time we try to balance the books. One of these days there's going to be something else off balance around here besides the books. Yes, that's it. What is it? It's about Norris, Mr. Beaumont. Oh, how's he doing? I meant to ask you. Well, uh... uh I think that he's learned the fundamentals of the bookkeeping department pretty well. After all, you don't want him to remain a bookkeeper. So I thought that uh, he might be about ready to get some experience in, uh, in another department. Well, I'm glad to hear such a favorable report. Now, let me see. If I might make a suggestion, or why not put him with Mr. Hamilton in the investment department? No. No, he's not ready for that yet. He ought to learn something about handling money first. Oh, by the way, what have you done about those new tellers? Oh, I, I'm attending to it. Uh, I have two boys practically set. Well, you know, that might be the very place to put Norris for the time being. And he could be under your wing a little longer. You could explain the business to him, and he could watch one of the experienced men for a few days. Then Norris is ready for the cage. I wonder how long I'll have to stay here. I can't quite get used to it. I was thrilled to death when Daddy told me about your promotion. Promotion? <laughs> Say, listen, I can't make up my mind whether I feel like a lifer in Sing Sing or a canary. <laughs> Beg your pardon, Miss Beaumont. I'm afraid you're holding up traffic. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. See you later. Thank you. Hello, Tug. Hello, kid. Still feathering the old nest, huh? Why not? When I get 200 more, I'm going to own my own crate, too. <laughs> How are things at the port? Oh, you know, the old man's still beefing as usual. Yeah? Yeah. Say, who's got my old 4 o'clock run? Oh, Fredericks did have it until he cracked up. Oh, he cracked up, huh? I should say so. Well, what plane was he using? Old Betsy. My old Betsy? Uh-huh. Well, how much damage was there? Well, there was a uh, concussion of the brain, two no, broken ribs. No, no, no. I mean the plane. What happened to the plane? Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. You know what happened up there at Albuquerque, the small landing field? Yeah, I know. The poor sap tried to land downwind, overshot the field, and washed out his landing gear against the fence at the other end of the field. That, that's exactly what he did. Is this a bank or an aviator's convention? Young man, I'm in a hurry. Will you pardon me? Pardon you? I'll pray for you. I'll see you later, Flash. Okay, Tug. I'm in a hurry, young man. that if you can spare the time. Is it any good? What? Why, uh, young man, you... Anything wrong, Mr. Hammond? 
No. No. It just took your bank ten minutes to take my money, and now my check for a hundred dollars is being questioned. Well, I'm really sorry, Mr. Hammond. The teller's a little new to the job, you know. Mm. I remember you always liked small bills. I'm sure you'll overlook this, Mr. Hammond. It won't happen again. <sighs> Mr. Hammond is one of the bank's biggest depositors. You've been on this job long enough to know that. Well, I don't like his attitude. Say, are you in my way, Mr. Webster? Your calendar's wrong. Today isn't the 28th, it's the 29th. Well, so I lost today. Yes. You mean to say you think Norris is ready for another promotion already? I really think he has talents which are more or less wasted in the cages. Is that so? Well, uh, where would you suggest that we put him, Webster? Well, I don't know offhand, but Norris has a sort of self-confidence, mm. a physical assurance that might make him a good contact man of some kind. Well, now, why not put him in my department? If he has all the qualities that Webster mentioned, I can use him. Well, I'll think about it. However, Webster, I want you to understand how much I appreciate the interest you've shown in Norris. Thank you, Mr. Beaumont. Thank you. Mr. Norris, I should like to discuss the loan with you. Yes, Miss Beaumont? I haven't any security but myself, Mr. Norris. How much am I worth? Well, Miss Beaumont, I'm afraid the bank hasn't enough capital to make a loan up to the full value of the security. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Lila, when are you going to set that date? I was thinking about the same thing. Maybe we'll talk about it tonight. Y hey, what's your hurry? I have to get my statement. They tell me my account's overdrawn again. Again? You mean yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it is, I'll have to beard Daddy in his den. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Five bucks is a dame. Well, you old son of a gun, how have you been? I started to feel better right after you left. <laughs> so they finally clipped your wings, eh? Yeah, but they can grow out again. Well, I'll be seeing you. Come out to the airport sometime. What's hey, your hurry? Come on in and chin a bit. No, I've got an appointment. Oh, so you're one of those big businessmen too, huh? Yeah. You remember that proposition I was working on? About having the plane pick up the mail from the incoming ships and bring it to the shore? Yeah. I finally put it over. I'm signing the contracts this afternoon. Well, that's great, Skip. Then you, you, you're all set then, huh? Well, not exactly. I've got to finance some new equipment. It's a condition in the contract. Well, uh, well how much will it take? Ooh, about $25,000. Well, that ought to be easy. I haven't been able to do it yet. Well, you didn't come to the right place. This is a live bank. I know they'd be interested in that kind of a proposition. Boy, this is one deal I can put over. Come on in, Skip. Now, you sit down. I'll be right back. To it, we've got to demand more security on our loans. These fly-by-night propositions... Gentlemen, I'm sorry to interrupt you this way, but I have a live proposition that we should act on right away, before it gets away from us. Have you taken it up with Mr. Hamilton? I haven't been able to. It just came in. But I knew Mr. Hamilton to be here, and I thought we all ought to get together on the deal right away. Well, we haven't got time to listen to it now. What do you mean you haven't got any time? You don't know what it's about yet, do you? All right, go ahead. Let's hear it, Norris. Gentlemen? We can get in on this deal on the ground floor for only $25,000. Not only will the bank make its regular interest, but it'll handle the funds of a company with a future as unbounded as the sky. What kind of business is it? Steamship to shore, airplane mail. It's a new idea. Airships? Yeah, another fly-by-night proposition. It's not a fly-by-night, it's a fly-by-day proposition. I appreciate your enthusiasm, Norris, and I want to thank you for bringing the proposition in, but 
We wouldn't be interested in financing airplanes. As far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't ride in one. Well, what's that got to do with it? You can finance a steamship company without being a sailor, can't you? Well, what kind of collateral security would the bank have for its money? Why, plenty. Three or four amphibian planes. Sure. And some morning we'd wake up and read that our collateral was at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Well, I... Oh, can't you let me explain? Let the boy finish. Now, Taylor's idea is to have the planes pick up the mail three or four hundred miles offshore and save the several hours lost in quarantine and the custom. Now, the idea is all right, Norris, but it's a proposition for a finance company, not a bank. Oh, but Mr. Hamilton, it's all been figured out on a business basis. Taylor knows what he'll get from the contract. After deducting the cost of, of operating the planes and his overhead and the interest on our loan, he'll be able to pay the bank back its money within a year. Oh. You're one of those guys that uses the airmail lines of this country every day in business. When you get a chance to help them, all you can do is that. Norris, I'm afraid as a banker you're going to make a good aviator. Say, listen, now, Norris. Wait a minute, Norris. Come on now. Take it easy. Norris, I'm not accustomed to having street brawls in my office. If my associates have got to figure on a fist fight every time they turn down one of your propositions, I'll have to ask for your resignation. All right, you've got it. How'd you come out? Feet first, I quit. What? Well, I thought everything was all We're right. We're going through with this proposition if we have to make a Lindbergh out of every banker in town. I think you're making a big mistake, Mr. Robinson. Well, I know, but it seems to be just as hard to get the 10,000 as the 25. Well, all right, thanks for your consideration anyway. The same old story, they don't finance airplanes. We can show them the color of some money, they'll put theirs up against it. Flesh? Financial man, I'm afraid you're still a good airplane pilot. Skip the last guy that said that to me, he almost got a good poke in the jaw. Listen, we're licked, we might just as well admit it. We've spent two solid weeks trying to put this thing over, but it's no go. Besides, the time limit of the contract for raising the money will expire in a few days. Oh, I know, Skip, but I hate to give up. Oh, forget about it. I'll notify my lawyer that I can't go through with the contract. What's the use of driving ourselves crazy? I'm still set here, and you can have your old job back any time you want. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Keep your eyes on things, will you? Okay. I have just received confidential information that the governor has ordered a special investigation of all state banks. Well, we made our audit out a month ago. Can't they take that? No, I don't think that will be sufficient. The audit will probably have to be as of tomorrow's closing. This is no doubt due to general banking conditions. Well, we're in pretty good shape, aren't we, Baker? What? Oh, yes. Yes. We're solid as a rock. Well, all right, then. As far as we're concerned, they can come in any time. It just struck me, John. The only thing they might criticize us on are those South America bonds. You know, we're still carrying them on our books at par. There you are. You should have gone down there and forced a liquidation when we talked about it before. Well, perhaps you're right. Maybe it isn't too late for me to hop down there now. Well, then you won't be here when the examiner's auditors come in, will you? No. No, but everything is in order. Why, you and Jim can take care of them. And if they should happen to question these bonds, why, I'm in South America arranging a liquidation. Maybe it would look better under the circumstances. Hmm. What do you think, Jim? That's entirely up to you, J.B. All right, John. I'll make arrangements to leave right away. Cal certainly takes a lot off of my shoulders. I don't know what I'd do without him. I've been trying to get in touch with you. Glad to find you here. 
Well, I'm sorry, but I can't return the compliment. Now, now. I hope you won't let that little incident of the other day stand in the way of something important for both of us. I've been investigating this proposition of yours, and I see some possibilities in it. Not so much from a banking angle, but from the standpoint of an individual investment. I'm glad to hear your eyesight is improving. Well, I still think as a bankable proposition it's precarious, but as a private investment, I'm willing to put a little money into it. How little? Well, as I recall, you needed $25,000 for financing. Very well. I'm willing to put up $10,000 cash. What do you want for your money besides my right arm? <laughs> oh, I'm not hard to do business with. I see. I'll take 25% of the capital stock. Well, that sounds reasonable enough. That is, if we can close the deal within a couple of days. I'm ready to close the deal right away. That's why I looked you up before I left town. Oh, you're going away? Yes. I'm going down to South America on a little business for the bank. Now, I prefer to give this money in cash, as a check would have to clear through my account. And my connection with your company might cause comment with my associates at the bank. Well, uh, that's a little unusual, isn't it? If you don't give a check, what record will you have of the transaction? <laughs> I'm still a banker, Norris. I prepared a little receipt for you to sign. It just acknowledges your receipt as $10,000 as payment for a pro rata block of capital stock in the steamship to shore aeroplane company you're organizing. Well, this sounds all right to me. Uh-huh. I guess I had you all wrong. I'm sorry I was a little hasty the other day. Oh, forget about it. Never let a little thing like that interfere with business. Boy, wait till Taylor sees this. Well, here's hoping we all make a lot of money. <laughs> oh, by the way, where's the new company going to bank? Well, I don't know, but I can tell you where they're not going to bank. <laughs> well, perhaps it's just as well. Why don't you try the Prudential Trust Company? They're progressive. You might even be able to talk them into the other 15,000. Well, thanks for the tip, Mr. Baker. I'll run down to the Prudential the first thing in the morning. That's fine. Hello? Hello, Marie. This is Mr. Norris. Is Miss Lila home? I'll see if she's in, Mr. Norris. Norris is calling. Mr. Norris? Yes, sir. I'll be right down. Hello. You looking for something, Miss Lila? Where's Mr. Norris? I don't know where he is. Well, I thought you said he was calling. Yes, I'm on the telephone. Oh. Oh, no. Hello? 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 Are you sure you haven't made a mistake, Simpson? Positive. Your cash is short exactly $10,000. I double-checked it myself. All right, Simpson. Let me know if anything shows up. Yes, sir. What do you make of this, Jim? 
I'm just as much in the dark as you are, J.B. We've never had a thing like this before. Too bad Baker isn't here. If they've made a mistake, Cal could put his finger on it in a hurry. On the other hand, if anyone's been getting away with anything... Now, let's see. Who would have access to the cash? Well, there's you, Baker, me, Webster, the tellers. All old employees. I'd as soon suspect myself as one of them. Well, this must have happened since the last audit. Have we let anybody out? No, not that I recall. Except... Wait a minute. Norris was here for a few months. He was in one of the teller's cages part of the time. Oh, but Flash is all right. I'll vouch for that. Hey, now, wait a minute. Uh, get me Mr. Williams, cashier of the Prudential Trust Company. Hello? Oh, Bob? This is Hamilton over at the Second National. Say, Bob, we received a form reference letter from you today inquiring about Robert Norris. Yes, that's right. Well, how large an account did he open? Is that so? In what form was the deposit made? In cash? Oh, yes. Oh, Mr. Norris is quite all right. Yes. Well, we'll mail you back the card today. Yes, all right. Well, thanks, Bob. Norris deposited $10,000 in cash yesterday. Jim, you don't think that We he... know that Norris has been trying in every possible way to raise money. And I think that under the circumstances, we should investigate it. All right, Jim. Get hold of Norris. Get him in here. We'll have a little talk with him. How are you, Miss Lane? Mr. Beaumont in? He's waiting for you. Thank you. Come in. How do you do, gentlemen? How are you, Norris? Have a seat. Thank you. I understand you wanted to see me. Guess you've been giving a little more thought to my proposition, huh? Not exactly. We wanted to talk to you about the deposit you made yesterday with the Prudential Trust Company. Well, why shouldn't I deposit with the Prudential? practically kicked me and my proposition out of here. Why should I give you a chance to make any money on it? That isn't what we're talking about, Norris. You have a right to place the money anywhere you please. What we want to know is where you got it. Where I got it? Well, after all, gentlemen, that's more or less my business, isn't it? I'm afraid under the circumstances, it may be our business. What circumstances? Our accounts are short exactly the sum of money that you placed in the Prudential Trust Company. Exactly $10,000. Say, are you accusing me Now, of... don't get excited, Norris. We are not accusing you of anything. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm not at liberty to divulge where I got the money. Don't you see you're leaving yourself wide open to suspicion, Norris? We'll keep anything you tell us confidential. Well, maybe you're right under the circumstances. I got the $10,000 from Mr. Baker. Baker? You mean our vice president? The same. That doesn't sound reasonable to me. You and Baker nearly came to blows here in this office, and now you tell us that he gave you $10,000. What did he give you the money for? Why, to help finance our airplane contract. Airplane contract? Why, Baker was dead set against it. Yes, as a banking proposition. But after an investigation, he thought it'd be a good proposition to put his own money into. I don't want to seem offensive, but it doesn't sound like Calvin Baker to invest his money in an airplane venture. I don't suppose you have any proof of all of this. Have you? Well, well, the only record of the transaction is the receipt for the money. What? I gave that to Mr. Baker. He took that with him. Well, now, that should be easy enough to check on. Huh? We can radio Baker on the boat. Shouldn't take more than an hour. Say, that's a good idea. Only, only you better tell Mr. Baker about the shortage in the bank so he knows why I told you all this. You don't mind waiting around here until we get Mr. Baker's reply? I should say not. I'll stay right here. This means as much to me as it does to you. Send in Miss Blaine.
radiogram for Mr. Baker. Uh, will there be any reply, sir? Yes, but I'll send for you. Well, it looks like the poor little fish is hooked. And while he's trying to get off the line, the big fish will swim out of the net. <laughs> You're pretty clever, Cal. Where would you like to go from South America? What's the extent of the back row? Oh, about 300,000. Enough? Plenty. I thought so. I've heard a lot about the nightlife in Shanghai. Shanghai? Hmm. No extradition? Not bad. Here's to us. And how? <laughs> Why, he's crazy. He gave me that money and he knows it. Why, he must be a crook himself. If he was here, I'd make him tell the truth. Well, he's not here. He's two or three hundred miles at sea. Well, I'll go and bring him here. That's ridiculous. I guess I'm intruding. Uh, you will have to excuse us, Lila. We are discussing something rather serious. You don't have to tell me that. You look like three old owls. But... Under the circumstances, perhaps it's just as well that you're here. What circumstances? Lila, the bank's cash is short a considerable amount of money. Norris deposited exactly that amount in another bank. He said he got the money from Mr. Baker, but Mr. Baker in a radiogram from the ship denies it. Yes. Right. Simpson wants to see me. It's important. Norris, I don't think you'd better leave the office until we clear this situation. You don't believe I took this money, do you, Mr. Hamilton? I don't want to believe it, Flash. The evidence is very damaging. I tell you, if I could lay my hands on Baker, I'd make him produce that receipt. What receipt? The receipt I signed when he gave me the money. It explains everything. Yes, but Baker won't be back for five or six weeks. But if you let me do it my way, I'll have him back here in five or six hours. If it were up to me alone, Norris, I'd feel inclined to let you go. Now, you heard how J.B. feels about it. What would you do, Lila? Just what you're going to do, Jim. Beat it. If that guy Baker's a friend of yours, you'll be at that airport with an ambulance. You, you old faithful. I hope he comes back. You just wait till he comes back. I've got a few things to say to him about hanging up that phone on me. Where's Norris? He's gone. Gone? Get the police, quick. Detective, the surety company. But, Daddy. Negotiable bonds worth over $400,000 are missing. When the auditors opened the envelope supposed to contain the bonds, they found blank paper. It's been going on for over two years. Two years? Then it isn't Norris. What do you mean? Norris hasn't been here two years. There's only one man who could have taken those bonds and arranged the deprecation so that they wouldn't show up in the audits. As a matter of fact, I've been suspicious of him for some time. Baker? Yes. He probably took the 10,000 to divert suspicion to Norris while he was making his own getaway. Do you realize what this means, Jim? The examiners are liable to close us up while they make the investigation. With the depletion of our assets, I doubt if we ever open. Our only chance, J.B., is to get Baker and that money back here. I'll get our lawyers to have the authorities arrange to bring Baker back the moment he gets into South America. Well, you can do what you please. But I'm going down to Central Airport and watch the planes come in.
Want to take a stroll with me around the deck? No, Cal. Out of gas. Must be a double. Half speed. We land. Stop. my friend. Are you in trouble? I'll say I am. Captain, have you got a passenger on board by the name of Calvin Baker? There he is. Hey, hey, you're coming back with me. There are a few things you've got to explain. Come on. Now, just a minute. Not so fast. Do you know this man? Oh, I never saw him before in all my life. Why, you... What do you mean by stopping my ship in this way? This man is an embezzler and I'm going to take him back. Why, the man's crazy. This is an outrage. Where's your authority to take this man? I don't need any authority. Now, wait Come a on. minute. Don't you realize that you can't take a man off of this ship on the high seas without the proper authority? Oh, but now listen, let me explain, will now you? Now you delete this ship long enough. Shove off. Get underway. Aye, sir. Load away a boat. Ben, hand that boat. Shanghai. Get the number of that plane. We're just wasting our time. Why expect the boy to do the impossible? Don't be so impatient, J.B. You've started the officials working on the case. Now, what else can you do? You'll admit I'm right, Taylor. Well, I don't know. Flash has changed my mind about a lot of things I thought were impossible. What do you think, Miss Beaumont? Let's give him another half hour, Dad. After all, Flash is Flash. Nonsense. We're just wasting our time. It's an amphibian. It's flash. I knew you couldn't bring Baker back. Why, such a thing would be impossible. Thanks. Get a hold of him, kid. Come on out of here. He's a little plane sick. We cut a few corners on the way back. 
Well, if you think he only got away with 10,000, you better have your bookkeeping machines overhauled. Take him to my office and hold it. Hello? As near as I can figure it, J.B., there's only a few thousand missing. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to come into my office in the morning, Mr. Taylor. It looks as though I just can't stay out of the airplane business whether I want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Skip, you think I can reach Yuma before dark? I don't know, kid. What's the rush? Well, there's a sky pilot down there that ties the kind of knots that don't unravel. Are you coming? By the way, Mr. Taylor, you won't forget to bring those contracts when you come in in the morning. I, uh... Bye, Daddy. See you Thursday. Remember, Flash, when you get back, your seat in the bank will be waiting for you. Dad, you're a swell guy and I like you. But you can take that seat in the bank and sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodbye, kiddies. Goodbye. Contact. <laughs>